It goes without saying that starting and growing an ERLC roleplay server in 2023 is quite a difficult thing to do. There's a lot of competition, there's a lot of things you need to try and avoid doing and there's a lot of things you need to try and do so you can stand out against other servers. So in this video I'm going to be going through a few things that you should do and a few things that you shouldn't do which can hopefully allow you to grow a successful roleplay server. So if this video does help you out or if you do find it enjoyable in any way then please do make sure you drop a like. And subscribe it does help me out a lot make sure you follow me on twitter and instagram at amazeplace underscore and also follow my tiktok amazeplaceyt but let's get straight into it okay so let's just start off by going to the menu tab and the server tab and quickly go into listed servers you can see that right now i'm recording this at about 4 p.m on a wednesday so nothing too peak it's not very not really a peak time it's also not really a dead time it's just an average time and you can see how many servers we have there's loads of servers up here that have max players and as we scroll down you can see there's some that have very little and there's a and there's hundreds of servers that have like below um, 10 players now if we go up to some of the more popular servers you can see some of these um, like hardline roleplay for example you can see this has 3.5k members so this is a established roleplay server where there is a server like this one called UK Border RP. It's just a random roleplay server. You can see the logo is just a very basically edit one, edited one, possibly even one from Google. Um, and you can see this is just kind of a random server that someone created, got a few players online, and it caught people's attention and it got up to the top of the server list. However, when this server shuts down, it will be very difficult for this owner to, to grow it again and back to this level. Whereas uh, an established one like this one, for example, with a few members, um, will be a lot easier to do that because they have people that will join SSUs. Now if you're wanting to get from that stage of being an unestablished server where you kind of just rely on luck to an established server where you have people that will join an SSU each time you host one, there are a few things that you need to do. Now the first one is you need to campaign and promote your server to a large audience that is interested. So for example in the PRC Discord server there's a channel where you can literally just promote your private server and you can get a lot of members that way and honestly promoting it is a really really good thing to do and there's also some other things you can do now you can post some social media videos so you can post a TikTok of your roleplay server or maybe you could even record like a YouTube video of a patrol in your server um, and maybe showcase some of the cool liveries you've got some of the cool roleplay that goes on some of the cool scenes and show to people why they should join your server if you don't show to people why they should join your server they're not gonna join because they don't have a reason to and they'll join a server that does give them a reason to if that makes sense now another thing that you want to try and avoid doing is something that is you know kind of a controversial thing so if we go over to the private server ads for ERLC here you could see all of these kind of have like this kind of way that they design it with all these crazy lines and all these emojis and all the bold text and all these arrows and and everything like that and you can see like they're all the same like this server uses the lines and the arrows if we scroll down we've got another one that uses these lines we've got some more down here that use arrows and emojis and they're all the same if i scroll through here they all kind of look like a very similar server they all use the same design format now when advertising it you need to try and make your unique so you need to kind of ditch all these emojis ditch these arrows and find a unique way to do it whether you do something whether you do something that's minimalistic and doesn't have all of this text which people won't really read to be honest people don't read these private server ads because it's just so much they just want to join a private server and have a bit of fun you just want to kind of find um, a, a, a way to do it in a minim minimalistic way that doesn't send people reading on and on and on for ages they just want to join a nice roleplay server and have a bit of fun for example this one you can see it doesn't have too many members but this is kind of a basic design now of course these bigger designs with all these arrows and stuff they work great as well however if you want to make your server just that little bit more unique then definitely try something that hasn't been done before it doesn't have to be making it smaller include less text just do something different avoid using these arrows and these lines and a bunch of emojis and try and create something that is unique to your server but like i said these are great ways to advertise so if you 
do you want to use just in things like this then absolutely go for it but if you're looking for more uniqueness then definitely try something different and the next tip i have is something that is quite self-explanatory create a unique name so if i go back to the listed servers you can see the top two servers are both los angeles roleplay we've got los angeles german roleplay and los angeles roleplay now i know these are based off of real places but you can see we've also got another los angeles roleplay larp right underneath that another los angeles roleplay then if we scroll down here we will find more and more another one here and there's loads of new york ones really really popular places like that now i know these are based off of real places like london for example there's a lot of london roleplay based servers but you want to try and create something that hasn't been done before so if you want to create a server then unfortunately if you want it to be successful then doing it based off of a real life place is not really going to get you anywhere it's already been done before and it will just end up causing tension and drama between a server that has a same name or is based off the same place as your server so you want to try and avoid having the same name because honestly people in ERLC create drama in their server themselves it's all unnecessary you need to avoid creating drama there's a thing which I don't really like about ERLC in the community where servers create unnecessary drama between each other as if they have like nothing better to do you could spend that time you know creating better training systems or just be in your server and actually role playing and having an active server instead of spending hours and hours arguing with different servers having drama having different raids and all that kind of stuff that happen with prc servers and just actually enjoy the experience and have fun you don't need to take it as a stressful and when it becomes like a, a, a chore almost something that you have to do that's when you kind of need to have a look at your server and think is this best for me can i be doing something more beneficial more fun for me etc so just try and avoid all drama and and back to the main point is have a name that is just unique um, and that is something that is fictional um, not really based off of a real place and just something that you've created that sounds cool and along with this obviously create unique liveries for your server as well and if you have a unique name then this will be easy if you have not a unique name like Los Angeles Roleplay for example then if you want to be realistic you'd create the same liveries that they have in Los Angeles which then would be the same as the other Los Angeles servers on the ROC so you really have to be unique unique with your name and it is a lot more important and then obviously the final one with this uniqueness is come up with unique rules and establishments to separate yourself from other roleplay servers and then the final thing that you should do is make it fun but be serious so at the end of the day like I was saying just a moment ago you're doing it because you want to and because it's fun no one is forcing you to make a roleplay server it's not going to become a job you're not going to make money from it unfortunately if that's what some of you want that's not going to happen you're not going to make money from a roleplay server it's going to cost you a lot of money if anything if you want to pay for the CAD or if you want to pay Robux for the private server packs or Robux for the liveries or you know maybe even if you want to pay your staff members which not many servers do at all um, but if you are going to do that it's going to cost you a bit of money so don't do it for a job you won't get any money if that's what any of you are thinking it's not going to happen you won't make Robux don't make all these donations and VIPs thinking you're going to make profit from it you won't I can nearly guarantee you for the most part you will lose quite a bit unless it is very very successful um but like i said make sure you have fun and make sure it's fun for your players to play as well so don't be really really strict like banning someone if they run a stop sign or go over the speed limit or if they get into a pursuit like every now and then don't ban them for fair roleplay it does happen in real life but also make sure you interact with your community so events and game nights and things like that so it shows how much you are actually interested in the community and in actually growing your server and it also acts as an incentive for people to engage and play on your server and be in your community a bit more but now we're going to move on to some things that you should not do so the first thing is don't hire random people make sure the people you do hire are trusted people there's a big thing in ERC with mod abusers now you need to be really really careful who you do pick as your moderator make sure it's a friend you trust or if it's a professional roleplay server then do applications never free rank someone unless you absolutely have to like you're starting off and you just need some people to help you moderate then 
maybe you can give your friends the moderator role. But once you're an established server, like the bigger ones I was mentioning earlier, then make sure you are very, very selective on who you give moderator to. And even things like department heads and maybe even people in the departments, once you get very established and very big, like who is actually allowed to be a police officer. And that's when you can become a whitelisted server, which I'm not going to talk about much in this video, but that is when you get the proper role play. And that's something you can only really do when you're a big server. So avoid becoming a whitelisted server until your server is fairly active and quite large. And the next thing is as an owner, don't set a bad example. You need to, you need to be someone your people in your server can trust and come to if they have any problems. And you need to be someone that avoids arguments and stays out of drama and all that kind of thing, because you don't want to be getting yourself in that kind of situation. You need to be setting yourself a good example for the members of your server. That one is quite like self-explanatory. No swearing, don't make fun of people. If you want to swear, then state that in your rules and state that that is kind of how your server is going to be. Now, obviously it's Roblox, so you can't swear in Roblox, but state for your server that in the Discord, for example, you allow swearing. So you avoid getting the people that don't like swearing, for example. And the final one is not really a massive thing, but it's make sure you're organized and you understand how your server is going to run. Don't be all over the place. Make sure you have an understanding of how you want your server to actually operate. Make sure if you're doing trainings, for example, make sure you follow a schedule. Make sure you keep it the same each training you do. So for example, different police officers don't have a different idea on what to do and what not to do or what cars to drive, for example. And just make sure you, you do things that are organized and that you actually understand. You need to manage your server as the owner. You need to know what is actually happening and what your staff will be trained to do and are actually doing. So uh, that is all I do have. I really, really hope this did help some of you out. It is a little bit of a more video where it's just me explaining, nothing really too exciting. But like I said, this video is definitely made for those of you that actually want to grow a roleplay server. And I've been in the ERC community for pretty much since like the first year since ERC was made and since private servers have been added and that kind of thing so I've literally seen them grow from the ground up and I've interacted with a lot of massive private servers and spoke to many owners of some big private servers so this information genuinely is what I think and what other people agree with as well and I genuinely believe that this is the key to success for your roleplay server so like I said hope this did help you out hope you enjoyed it please like and subscribe show your support and if it actually did help you out leave a comment in the comments below people that click on this video can actually look in the comments and see that it does help people out because this is actually genuinely good advice in my opinion and from the opinion of people that have big roleplay service themselves um so yeah please make sure you check out all of my other social medias from the link in the description as well but thank you so much for watching and hopefully i will see you in my next one bye